Yeah, good day, guys. Uh, this morning we're going to get into the post-apocalyptic vehicle and uh, get into some steering and some brakes. Watch out for zombies. Here we go. Uh, so today we're going to try and do some steering on the big beast. So for the steering uh, we need to go from here which is the original uh, Toyota Hilux uh, steering box which is already on the chassis and here's a rubber uh, I don't know dampener not really a uni but it's a, a dampener and, it, and then it's got to go all the way to here somewhere because there's the original spot way over there but that's right behind the engine so we're going to make a hole right here because if you kind of look at like here's the steering box just here if you look directly in line past the manifolds right under that booster there's the steering wheel so so the column is directly but when it was connected to the Mitsubishi Lancer uh, steering box it sort of come out this way so it went sort of sideways and then down to the rack I guess that's what they had so that's what they did so anyway, I'm just going to keep it straight in line. So there's going to be a big hole there. Got a hole saw, I'll just make a big hole. Make a little bracket off of there and connect it up to the steering box just here. With the, uh, what's he on it? So just a little bit of mucking around. So here's the inside. There's the, uh, well there's the old hole. You can see the engine block there. And here's the, um, I can reach it. There's the universal that went straight onto the steering rack. Uh, you can sort of see it up in there, see that? That's where it is up in there. I need to make a hole sort of behind this brake pedal, probably where that button is, where that clip is. So make a big hole right there and feed it through. So I've got a piece of, so that's just um, a spline, can't quite see it. It's just got a spline on it and that bolt holds it all together. So I happen to have a piece. Uh, I've got a few old unis and steering joints and things like that. So here's a piece. It's not off this vehicle, but it's I think it's off a Subaru or something. They're all very similar. It's just got that flat spot in it and that spline and then a shaft and goes down to another uni. Now this one's a little bit clunky. So I thought, well, if I'm going to use any of them, I might as well use one that I can't use for anything else. So just going to hack it off here somewhere, extend the shaft. So I've got another piece of shaft, which is, uh, that's actually out of a treadmill. And I've got a bearing that it came out of the treadmill that I'll be able to put on it because we need to have uh, some support. So the support bracket will need to be uh, mounted off of here. Like that's the body bracket. So I'll have to make a, a, a bracket or something and have the bearing sort of about here somewhere. So the bearing and the shaft and, and it'll all go straight down to there. So it won't foul with this, the top suspension arm or anything. And I think it'll uh, it'll work pretty well. Let's try and get into that, eh? Let's start cutting a hole and making some shaft adapters and try and marry it all up. Let's, let's see how we go. After a little bit of engineering and a bit of hacking, uh, here's that um, uh, clunky sort of uh, uni joint that I shortened up. This is what it would be like. It was all jammed in there, so I drilled out the what I thought was plug, but it's actually glue. It sat in there. That cavity there was filled with glue, some kind of a plasticky type glue, and this was just crushed against that spline. So it took heaps to get it out, hence why I cut it and thought oh well I'll split it see if it helps reduce it right, so I got rid of that and this here fits perfectly in there so that goes straight on to the uni under the dash done some magical work on the lathe I machined that out probably half a mil and it fits superbly this steel shaft now like I'll hammer it all in there together and then I'll, so I'll spot weld all these holes uh, so then we just have the little bit of spline sticking out. So I've basically made myself a nice big long steel shaft. And the bonus is this bearing, uh, which I'll use because it was on... Uh, you can get it on there. There we go. This bearing fits all the way down there. And here's the part of the uh, treadmill tube that the bearing used to sit inside. I will then just push that in there. 
So then I'll just weld the bracket on from here down to the firewall. So, or to the chassis, sorry. I'll bolt that all down to the chassis. And then we'll have, yeah, we'll have all our stuff done. So I've been fiddling with that stuff on the side. And I've just taken the wheel off and I've marked out where I'm planning to drill the hole. Can you see just under the booster there, see that little tiny black dot? That's about where it's going to come out. So I've done it at the same height as what the original would have been because that's the length of the uh, little shaft and the uni joint that's under the dash. So I'll just use that hole uh, alignment and I'll just drill a 50mm hole or something through there with a hole saw. See how it looks and then we can sort of work out the rest of this uh, shafty sort of connection typey thing. So I'll uh, drill a hole and see how, we, how it looks for alignment. So let's get into that. Dugger hole. We have a 50 mil hole. Two hole saws later. That was a bit of an effort. Bit of mucking around. I might have to make the hole elongated, like you know, put the saw in at the bottom over here and down that side and cut down this side so I can actually poke through the uh, universal with a bit of shaft and then just sort of fold it back up there or make a boot or because the other one, the original factory one, it's a big elongated hole, like a big egg-shaped sort of thing. It's not just a round hole. Because I was thinking, how the heck am I going to get that through there? Because you can just see it right there. There's the there's the shaft that's got to come through. But I'd have to have a 150 mil hole just for it to for it to swing out into place and go through the hole. Little bit of a trick. Might just run the old uh, saw and cut a couple little slots down there and pull that out of the way might be the easy way i think without the motor in the way someone put a motor in there who would put a motor in there who why do people have to make things so hard so i'll just uh reach from under here and uh cut that through and we'll be right anyway so a few little mods and then i can get that hole through there i mean the the shaft through there then we can work out exactly how long i need the other doodad and the uh, connecting rod that goes from there up to the where the column uni joint is we can work on that Nice little bevel, plenty of room to fill. So that's the bit that goes on the steering box. There's a nice big shaft. Here's the sleeve with a bearing in it. I mean, that's not pressed in, so it's just sitting there. You can't really see, it's a spliny bit down there. So I'll just weld this up. Uh, let's, uh, let's get into that. That's hot, damn hot. Lucky I remember to put the bearing on, beautiful. That colour is sort of a good thing, isn't it? Yeah. 
Yeah, I think we're hot enough. We're done. So if you want to help out the channel and uh, help me continue to do the work that I'm doing on these funny looking little wild things here, consider subscribing. That would help out the channel a hell of a lot. Do like the video, just click that like button. Don't think about it, just do it. Anyway, let's get back to the video. So the steering is all done and uh, it works quite well. Turns left to right, nice and easy, full lock without any trouble. Uh, mechanically. Uh, it's not hydraulically connected. It's a power steering box, so uh, that's going to be <laughs> heaps easy with these big wheels we've got to try and turn. But anyway, that's all connected. I've got some brake lines that came off of uh, the Hilux chassis originally. And it's like it had two lines to the back because it had a weight proportioning valve. So I've, I'm only going to use one of those because I don't have that weight proportioning valve in there. I've just got rear brakes, which is a bonus, I guess, <laughs> to have brakes. So I'm just going to run one line. Uh, so take it out of that saddle connecting sort of thing and uh, work it out from there. So I'll just run one all the way. It goes on the inside of the chassis. Anyone who's got a Hilux or knows how to work on Hiluxes, it goes on the inside of the chassis. So I'll run it all the way up there and then work out how I'm getting it to the other side. So that's the whole rear brakes. If I do that one line up to here from all the way up there, run it all the way up and then it's done and it all fits. And then I've just got to try and get it to the other side of the engine bay. I'll lift the bonnet again and we'll have a look. Because we're going to use the original uh, Lancer uh, booster, vacuum booster and master cylinder. We're hoping it's going to be just enough, but it, it may not. Like, I don't think the bore size of the master cylinder is big enough uh, to push fluid for all of these. So we'll give it a shot. If it doesn't work, well, it's just a matter of changing the booster after. Uh, the booster and the... Well, we may even leave the booster. Anyway, we'll work out what we have to do. For the moment, we're going to run some lines 
and see if we can get some sort of brakes, which will be nice because uh, when I roll it outside, I can actually pull it up. And so we'll do some hydraulic lines. So steering's done. Let's do some brakes. Here we go. So I've got the uh, front wheel in full lock, you know, to the right, turning to the right. So I got an idea on where I'm going to mount this little bracket. So this was the uh, little valve that was off the Hilux chassis. It had, it was like this, because it, it, it originally had two lines uh, from the rear because it had a weight proportioning valve connected to it. So it had one line in here, one line in there. So it must have been pressure down and back to the back of the vehicle and then go through that weight proportioning valve because it was a utility. And then it come back to this one. And then this one went to the front wheel. And this one must have gone to the other gone across the other wheel or something i don't quite know so it's not going to be the same i'm just going to because there's no you can see through it there there's no valves or anything i'm just going to use it as a t-piece and try and mount it into there see it was mounted right there with that there was a little hole under this tab the steering tab i just well the steering bracket i just put here and then that tab uh that was just on the piece of steel that i had so i'm going to cut that off that uh silver piece and then I'll use this original uh, tab, but I might cut the end off so it's tucked away. Uh, so there's actually plenty of room. There's a good 100 mil between the tire at full lock and where that uh, where the chassis is, I guess. So it's going to be right up against the chassis. It'll hit the uh, body mount before it'll hit this bracket. So I'd rather did that before we had issues uh, losing brakes out in the middle of nowhere. And anyway, so I'll continue with the brakes and I'll get that uh, long line because I'm only going to use one of the rear brake lines coming from the the diff, the flex line on the diff. And then I'll run it all the way up here, see where it goes because it's going to be 400 mil shorter from when I see there's a joint in the chassis there. I cut and shut the chassis uh, 400 mil shorter to accommodate this little beast kind of looks pretty good doesn't it the uh the old lancer with all the doors and the bonnet on well paint's really awesome but you know it uh anyway let's uh get into doing some brakes okay so not a lot of room under here but i guess there is a lot of room if you sort of think about how high it is off the ground so there's the uh fitting i need to join into that's the flex hose that goes to the diff uh, the rear differential. What I might do is, since we're only going to use one line uh, to the rear, uh, this original one that I've got, you know, this, this little one here I've got underneath, because I've got to find a home for 400 mil. Because uh, you have a look, this is where the join is in the chassis. So all the front may be right, because there's all sorts of things along there that and clips and stuff to clip it to, like there's. There's a clip just there. So there's a bit of mucking around on where it all goes, but um, because I've got 400 mil to play with, I might be able to send this line straight up to the master cylinder. Actually, that might work. Okay, so I can, I'll do that. The plan changes uh, as you travel along. So I'll run that line at this end and put the fitting straight in there. And then I'll have all this access for the front part. So that might be the go, I'll go with that. So I'll just sit you guys aside on a tripod and see what fun we can have under here. Or if it's no fun, you may not even see it. So anyway, I'll uh, keep filling, eh? Here we go. Bought some uh, pipe spanners. Pretty cool, eh? Okay, so here's the line that comes up from the rear diff. Perfect length. What I could actually do is go straight into the side of the master cylinder and just go from this one, uh, just use a longer line and go down to I think I've got a line from here that will make it all the way up to the top. I just need a T-valve, which I've got on that block. Here it is there. Is it T-valve? So I can have one line straight out of 
into here and then one goes down to the front and the other one goes across the other side which if you follow this line here goes all the way across all the way across all the way across all the way over there and goes inside the wheel well where the original front brake was now if i take that from pull that inside into the engine bay and undo that little bolt there if i undo that and then undo that bolt i can then bend it down so it'll reach down to where the other see that bit of silver tape down there that's where the other one's going to go i think we may have it that two in and four out sort of block is it doesn't seem to be like i'm no brake expert and you know leave a comment below if you understand how all those proportioning blocks and everything works it just looks like a manifold to me so i'm going to remove that manifold just go straight from this one and straight from this one so there's only two out on this master cylinder so hopefully we can get it to work because like i mean this is perfect that'll fit straight into there and this one coming up doing the little loopy thing and going under there i'll be able to hook that straight into it straight into this t-piece one one will go to one side and the other one will go to the other side oh this is just too easy but anyway leave a comment below if you know if that's a proportioning valve of some kind or it's just a manifold to even out the pressure for all the wheels i'll uh, get into this i'll set the tripod up and have a bit of a fiddle here we go i don't really need a step ladder So who's good with brakes? Do you reckon that's a proportioning valve? Like I mean with those inserts in the bottom you'd think there'd be something spring loaded in there? I don't really know, like you can see all the way through on this one, but no well, you can't see, I must be seeing shit. So you can't see all the way through because it must go through this valve and uh, I don't know, somewhere there. I don't know, so they're the two feeds in from the master cylinder and one does one side and one does a rear and one does another rear and uh, i don't know it's all just too much so maybe front and rear just don't have i don't know who cares let's just hook it up and go from there You guys aren't going to believe this. That line that I just put in there, it fits straight in. There's the flex hose that comes from the caliper. There's the little bracket and it just screws straight in. That is like it's meant to be there. So I put that bolt back in there and this one, all I've got to do is bend it up to where the valve's going to be and Bob's your uncle. All I've got to do is work out one to go from the little valve when I mount it onto this tab here and go all the way down to the other caliper anyway let's look into what i've got lying around to hook into there here we go okay so i've made up this little bracket well i've only made that piece and it bolts on to the original part which has got the t-piece on it which is the piece that i need like there's no it's not a proportioning sort of part of breaking so i don't need this part but I, i'll leave it on there in case it all doesn't work and i've got to change it anyway uh, i can mount it right there and bolt it on where the old one was and i'll put this in place and that's the one from the other side which connects already and i've got this one which i had to make up this end uh with the flaring tool and it will be perfect for this side so then we've got all four wheels covered i'll just uh put those in eh? so let's uh let's do a couple of bolts up and we're away Tech screw power. So that's all connected. Uh, hopefully that's 
gonna work. The booster's not real big, it's only a little single diaphragm, but it may or may not work, we don't know yet. Anyway, fingers crossed, hopefully uh, we have some brakes. So I won't be bleeding it because I'm planning to take the body off again, so I'll have to actually undo. I'll have to undo these fittings again. I'll have to undo that one again. Yeah, so we'll have to take those few things off for when we lift the body off. Uh, hopefully it's for the last time, but uh, I'd say there'll be a couple more goes yet. But uh, steering's done and the brakes are done. Well, the brakes are connected. It's not hydraulically bled or anything because we're going to be uh, lifting the body off again and we'll have to undo half of those lines anyway. So, but at least I know they're all the right length. They're all sorted. They're all connected. All I gotta do is fill up that reservoir and give it a shot. Hopefully the, the master cylinder is big enough. Uh, here's hoping and uh, we'll be away. Yeah, so we got brakes and we got steering. So we can roll it down a hill if we want to and it'll maybe stop once we bleed it. But anyway, uh, so we just gotta actually make it run and things like that. So that might be in the next video. So come along for the ride and uh, we'll try and get it running. Hopefully the next time. So soon it'll be running and we'll actually be able to drive it and select gears and things like that. So we've got a few things left to do and we'll be able to tidy all them up. So guys, if you haven't already, consider subscribing if it's been of any value to you and uh, we'll catch you on the next one. See ya.